Hey, what's up guys? Got the brand new Netgear Orbi 860 series that I'm gonna unbox, do a full on review. So speed test and wired and wireless backhaul configurations, range test, show you guys what the app looks like. And at the end, let you guys know my opinion. Who's this for and why? So without further ado, this is a tri-band mesh system. Wi-Fi 6 has a speed reading of AX6000 and comes in a three pack. And real quick, a mesh system is basically three of these are working together to create one network, which I believe is on this side. So there we go. So this is designed to replace your existing router. Essentially, these create the network, connects your, the router of this connects to your modem. The satellites boost the Wi-Fi speed. So wherever you are throughout your home, it automatically switches you to the closest node. So you're always connected and have strong signal. So there we go with mesh Wi-Fi. It looks like they've improved the antenna design to deliver up to 20% greater Wi-Fi coverage and performance. And it now has a 10 gigabit internet port, a WAN port, wide area network. So let's open this up. There's a whole bunch more information on the other sides, but let's just get to the unboxing. So get started. It tells you what's what and this thing usually works with the Netgear Orbi app, which this is not my first Orbi. So, okay, well, let's actually look at the units right now. So, yeah, okay, so this is the router. So let's open this up. Okay. All right, so these are the ports. So we have the sync button, a 10 gig switch, four gigabit switches. We have a factory reset and we have the power port. And this is smaller than the Orbi RBK963. In fact, let me bring that one right now. So this is the quad band mesh system that Orbi makes very, very fast. So it's not much smaller than that. However, again, this one is bigger for size comparisons. Okay. And let's look at the satellite. Now the satellite should be the same. So we just, we'll just look at one of them. For instance, okay, there we go. Okay, so no WAN here, obviously, because this is a satellite, and we have four gigabit ports, reset, power, and the sync button, and yeah, Orbi looks all nice, very, uh, the same, pretty much the same shape as the other ones, so very noticeable that it's an Orbi. And the other satellite is exactly the same, and I imagine these are essentially three power port plugs, three power cables, and an ethernet cable, which is typically the case for um, probably all of the mesh Wi-Fi's that I test. So this is a CAT6 cable, which is good. It is 100 to 120 volts, so it does not support 240 volts. So depending on the country you're in, they'll probably send a different model. But yeah, there's the plug. Good to go. It's been over two weeks since I've unboxed this thing using as my main mesh system and so far so good. So no drops, everything was super easy to set up using the Orbi app. You can also customize it a whole lot more by going to orbilogin.net, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit. Now in that time frame, I had a chance to do all the speed test range tests, which I have here. And for my testing devices, I use my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device and a combination of my Galaxy S22 Ultra and Pixel 7 Pro, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, both of these give very similar numbers, so I just went with the Samsung numbers this time around. But if you guys are wondering, well, why test with the Wi-Fi 6E device if this is a Wi-Fi 6 router? Well, typically from what I've seen, Wi-Fi 6E devices do better on speed test uh, and sometimes on range tests as well even when you're testing with the Wi-Fi 6 router. So that's why I basically always include them. Getting to the internet speed test. Now it's important to note that no matter how fast the router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, which in my case, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. Even though this router itself can actually support internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second using one port. And if you use link aggregation, which is using the first two ports, you can actually achieve up to 11 gigabits per second if you're lucky enough to have that problem. Now, but in my case, that doesn't matter because I'm limited to 940 megabits per second and 880 down. So, but the good thing is if I decide to upgrade later, 
this can support up to those crazy fast speeds. Now, when I'm hooked up via Ethernet, so when my computer's hooked up to this thing, I get those speeds, no problem. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story, and looking at the numbers, we, you could see there is a drop. Not so much in the download section, still getting actually fairly good speeds in the download, but it's more noticeable in the upload speeds, which is pretty typical. But generally speaking, above 700 is fairly good. It's on the better side of internet speed tests that I do with my specific internet speeds. To find out the true performance of this mesh system, I don't want to limit it by my internet speed. So what I do is I create a local speed test server. So I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer in the single router configuration. And in the wired and wireless backlog configurations, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary node, which then jumps to the primary router, which then goes to my computer, which is acting as the server. Now, the benefit of doing this is that I'm no longer limited by my internet speeds, and I'm also not being limited by the public speed test server, which can be busy at times, or actually most of the time. Looking at the results, there's a huge increase in speeds, both for Wi-Fi 6 and especially for Wi-Fi 6E devices. And this is what I was talking about, that even though this is a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, Wi-Fi 6E devices typically do better from what I've seen in lots of cases, actually. Now, if you guys are wondering, well, why is the Wi-Fi 6E being capped to slightly under gigabit speeds? And the reason for that is that this is a router and these are dedicated satellites. And so we only have one fast 10 gigabit port, which is actually designed, uh, reserved for my modem, my ONT, I should say. So... This is not hooked up to my server. My server is hooked up to one of the gigabit ports, and as a result, it's actually being capped to gigabit speeds. Now, jumping to wireless backhaul speeds, this is where this thing shines. And as a recap, wireless backhaul is when your satellites are wirelessly talking to your main system. So there is no Ethernet cable in between them, and yes, in wireless backhaul, you're still free to use the Ethernet ports, and you're still good to go. Now... The wireless backhaul speeds on this are crazy fast. There's basically almost no reduction in speed. So if you're gonna considering getting this thing and you don't wanna run wires, this is really, really good for that. And the same is true for wired backhaul. Wired backhaul is when the satellites are hooked up via ethernet to the main system. And essentially, as you guys can see from the numbers, there's hardly a drop between wired and wireless backhaul. Getting into the range test, so range will vary based on location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, a lot of other walls, all of this stuff can negatively affect your range. So I'm in more of an open area, not super open, but open enough that I get some decent range. And this is no exception to that. So at 20 feet away, get some phenomenal speeds, hardly a drop. In fact, there was a slight increase in download speeds at 20 feet away. And at 50 feet away, very, very good, I'm outside. And at 100 feet, it's basically around the same speeds as 50 feet, which is kind of crazy. And then after that, it does slow down and it goes all the way up to 300 feet. So overall, got some very good range out of this thing, especially for the first 100 feet of it. For setup and configuration, use the Orbi app, which is available both on iOS and on Android. And it's a very simplified, nice interface that you use to set this thing up. Essentially, it tells you what to connect where. Basically, you connect the yellow port of this to your modem or your ONT or your DSL, whatever you're connecting it to to give you internet access. And then you power on the satellites and they could wirelessly be connected. They could be connected via ethernet or you can mix and match wired and wireless backhaul. So all of that's fine. Then it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name and a password. Now. If you want to pick the same Wi-Fi name and password as your router that you're replacing, all your devices should automatically connect to this new one without pretty much doing anything. However, it's very important to note that both the Wi-Fi name, the SSID, and the password, they're both case sensitive, so very important. Now, the Orbi app gives you a few other options, so you could set up a guest Wi-Fi, 
You can even set up an Internet of Things Wi-Fi, which is a new trend that I'm starting to see with mesh systems that there's a specific Wi-Fi just for your Internet of Things, your, basically your smart home devices. So that's kind of cool that they included that as well. And you get some other basic things in there. Now to really customize this thing, go to OrbiLogin.net, which gives you a whole bunch more options. You could really customize it like crazy. And that's really why they made the Orbi app so simplified because they just, they didn't want in my mind, I don't think they wanted people to go through like 8,000 options to get to what they wanted to do quickly. So I think of the Orbi app as kind of like a main shortcut or a quick setup guide kind of thing. And the Orbi login on that is really when you want to customize all your stuff. So, and one thing that's included with this is now they give you one year of their neck gear armor, which is basically internet security. Now, is it worth getting this Orbi? Why or why not? Well, I can only see one drawback considering the price. So let's get it out of the way. If you have internet speeds faster than gigabit and you're planning on using wired backhaul, then the satellites, not the router, but the satellites will be limited to gigabit speeds because you only have one crazy fast port on the system. So aside from that, this thing is phenomenal, especially if you're planning on using wireless backhaul. So if you're gonna get this thing, even if you have faster internet than gigabit, you can plug this in. These are wirelessly talking to this guy. You're gonna get pretty amazing speeds considering it's wireless backhaul. So let's keep that in mind. But from the testing that I did, it did very well for that also gave some very good range test as well, especially up to 100 feet. After that, it did slow down, but it does go all the way up to 300 feet. And in my place, I only really only need two of these. So if you have a larger home, you could get away with, you could probably get away with just having these three. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And I did also wanna say thanks to Netgear for sending me this Orbi to test. Now, full disclosure, they did not pay me for this review. I was free to test just like I do with all my other systems. So as always, smash that subscribe button. It keeps these videos coming. And thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.